All right, we're gonna talk about exposure today in photography uh, or video, I suppose. And um, what we're talking about is how much light we're letting into the camera. And we're gonna be able to control that by adjusting our shutter speed and our aperture and our ISO. Um, you know, you're gonna adjust your exposure typically by touching on the screen and sliding a little, there's a little sun on my camera up and down. You can see since from the beginning of this video here, it's uh, you can see uh, the the light is shining through the windows behind me, and it's making my these shiny bright shiny spots on my forehead here because I don't have so much hair up there apparently, and uh, you know on my nose here, um, and you know we can decide to darken that so that doesn't happen. But no matter how much how dark we make this, you can see we start to get. We can start to see what's outside the windows, right? If I if I darken the image here, uh, but then obviously I'm way too dark, and so we have always this inherent problem in uh, photography, at least right now. Uh, this is sort of what HDR, or sorry, not HDR, uh, HDR images are, are try to kind of combine this foreground element um, with this background part and get both of those together, and what I want you guys to be doing here, or uh, shooting assignment here this week, is to be playing with exposure. And in order to do that, I want you to know first how to control your camera exposure. So if you're just using your phone, totally fine. That's what I'm using right now to record this video. Um, you're gonna just use your little slider here, slide things up and down. And sometimes you have to make a choice when you're taking a picture, if you want to expose for the highlights like we're doing there, or if you want to expose for the shadows and you're gonna lose the detail on the highlights. And sometimes there's no way around that. So to start with here, what I'm thinking is, I want you to take a picture of something black and I want you to take a picture of something white and uh, maybe take a picture of something gray. What we want to notice, there we go, is that when you point your camera initially at something that's black, um, it might look gray. And if you point your camera at something that's white, it might look gray as well. The camera typically assumes, well, not typically, the camera always assumes that everything that it's looking at is gray. And what I mean by that is that the average value reflecting off the surfaces equals gray. Okay, so if uh, in this scene, for example, we've got this really bright white light behind me, and then obviously I'm not as as bright as that, I'm in this darkened uh, space here. And so um, it, it kind of averages out all those values and it guesses how much light to let in the camera and how bright to make the image. And uh, you know, in most scenes, the cameras do a pretty good job of figuring out what the exposure should be, but sometimes not so much. So let's look at something uh, that's gonna cause the, the camera some problems. All right, so here our subject is this black uh, guitar case, and you'll notice that it looks pretty black like this. Uh, and that's because it is black, of course, and also though because the other areas around the guitar case are gray. So we've got things that are like a pretty fairly light gray. We've got uh, things that are light, and we've got things that are dark. So if we average those two things out, that sort of equals gray. Something dark, something light, you end up with, uh, you know, if you assign mathematical kind of numerical values to these things, if this is a 10 and this is a, a zero, we end up with a, averaging those out to a five somewhere in the middle and the camera sets the exposure for that five value and it sort of works out okay. Uh, as we get closer, hopefully, what we'll notice, there we go, is that this is not black anymore because the camera has no idea what we're taking a picture of here. Sometimes it can figure out what you're taking a picture of. Like um, when I was had myself in there, you know, a lot of cameras now with all the computers and everything can figure out what a person's head looks like and they assume you're trying to expose for the person. But this is a weird kind of object. And we can see that the computer, the camera automatically makes it gray, right? The camera always sees gray. Okay, so I'm gonna have to manually darken this thing uh, in order to make it look the correct color. 
And so this is one of the things I want you to do. One of your assignments here, you're gonna find something that's black and see if you can't notice that when the camera takes a video or picture of it, uh, that it's naturally gonna be lighter than it should be and you wanna darken it, okay? So in this image here, let's imagine that the computer, the camera is analyzing this thing and assigning values to all of this. First, let's make it black and white, uh, just to help us kind of visualize this. And uh, you can imagine looking for the darkest areas in the image here, all these little circles, and assigning a value, okay, let's say like 10. Um, and then we'll do the same thing for a bunch of other values. Let's imagine these things are seven, these lighter areas are one, three, and you can imagine going through all the rest of them here. I'm not gonna do that. So if we add them all up, it will come up with some sort of a number that would be the average value in that scene. And that's what the camera is going to use uh, to set your exposure. So if we took a whole bunch of scenes, which people have done in the computers, and averaged at all the values, uh, we would discover that we end up with approximately the same average for tons and tons of scenes. And that average value is gray. All right, let's try to visualize this here by mixing these colors together. We're going to average these values out and we would end up with this kind of gray value. And this is what the camera assumes that it's looking at all the time. The camera always sees gray and it assumes that making everything that gray will give you the proper exposure. But it doesn't always quite work out that way as we see with something that's completely black or something that's completely white. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing with something white. As I slide across here and fill our frame, you're gonna see the camera automatically darkens it because it assumes everything is supposed to be gray, right? And we don't want it to be gray. So in order to get this thing to look white, we would have to brighten our image up. Um, this thing in particular is quite flat looking and there's not a lot of texture in it, but there we go. You can see the other problem is if we get too bright, then we lose the detail in our, our object here, right? So we want to get it bright enough that it's looking the right color, but not so bright that we're losing detail in the highlights. Let's try to find something else here. All right, so for the second part of this assignment, what I want you to try to do is find something or set something up where you've got this situation where we have to choose. Do you want to expose for the dark shadowy areas or are you going to expose for your highlights and lose detail in the shadows. Okay, so I want you to try to either set something up or find something that sort of forces you to make this decision. I want to see both of them, or three really. You know what, let's do that. Okay, so we want to see a shot like this where we've intentionally lost some detail in our highlights. We want to see a shot where we uh, are exposing more for our highlights and maybe we've, and we have lost detail in our shadow areas and Let's try one in the middle, where we have like some sort of a, a happy medium here where, you know, maybe decide which one you think looks better and uh, justify, explain why you think it looks better. Okay, write, it, write down a little uh, blurb there and explain why. I think, I think that forces you to, to think about it more clearly when you have to write it down. That's why I'm asking you to write it down. Um, you know, you can just kind of say something in your head, but when you have to put it into words, you have to think about it a little bit more clearly, I think. All right, there we go. Okay, so I've got these, well, they're kind of weeds, I guess, because I don't really want them here, but they're, what are these, like lilacs or something? And uh, they look kind of interesting, right? And, except there's a whole bunch of other all this other stuff around here, these tall grasses and stuff, it looks really natural, but it also looks kind of uh, not professional. So we wanna to try to figure out, thinking of 
our composition now, right, in terms of what we want this photo to look like. So we want to pick out what's important to the shot. The main idea are, are these, these things here, right? The, the shape of these flowers is really interesting. Uh, and so we could get closer. Um, and we want to notice what's in focus or not. We notice we can't get everything in focus at once here. Okay, the closer we get to something, you can see we're starting to have to choose what we want to focus on. Okay, I can focus on these back ones and then the foreground elements are, become blurry. And maybe you want to do that on purpose. That can look cool too. Um, maybe we want to pull these away since they're kind of weeds. I'm just going to pull one of these out of here. And what if I hold it up like this or sideways? And thinking about exposure again, you can see this was too bright. Okay, the camera is exposing for this fence back here. Okay, put this thing in front and it, the camera can't figure out that maybe we want to focus on this. Okay, so we're gonna have to automatically adjust our exposure here. You can see the fence is getting darker. That's okay. And we want to control those highlight details, right? We don't want the lost detail in all the weight areas like that. Even though it's blurry, we can get a sense for uh, the detail that's being lost there, I think. Okay. We want to darken our, our image here. And if we don't like the way it looks, maybe we need to find the more even lighting. Okay. That's going to allow us to see this thing differently. Okay. Let's try that. Okay, so we got this kind of little shadowed area here. And so I'm gonna move into the shadows, place this thing down here. Oh, there's a little ant crawling around. And so here you can see, we are going to be able to get more detail in our highlight areas and our shadows. And neither, the highlights are not gonna be as bright and the shadows are not gonna be as dark. Okay, the other thing we can do is by moving our subject farther away from the background. Okay, here everything's in focus, right? As I move this thing farther away, because I pulled it out of the ground, admittedly we had to kill this plant to, to do this. Sorry, plant. But as that gets farther away, you can see it's gonna get blurrier. And so that can create a less distracting background. Maybe I would think about pulling out those dandelions there to get rid of that yellow. All right, so maybe we just want to try some different ideas here, change the background, maybe rotate it this, and we'll maybe crop out the top right-hand corner there, so we'll zoom in a bit. Feels maybe a little tight though, there's not enough space around our, our flower, so we could, we rotated the whole thing. It doesn't look as good in the video, but, um, and then we could maybe move it away from the background so the background's a little bit more blurry. That kind of, that little hole there kind of bothers me, but um, that's okay for now. All right, so when we're inside or we have a studio space or something, uh, then you obviously can control the lights and adjust your lights to whatever location you want. When you're outside, uh, you've got to work with whatever you've got. So instead of moving the light, you just move yourself, right? So here, the light's kind of coming from behind me, shining straight on the front of this tree. And if we come around this way, then we've got uh, backlighting. And if we expose for our sky over there, then we're gonna get a kind of silhouetted backlight, strong backlit kind of look here, which could look cool. Just a little bit about ISO. Are we talking about uh, exposure is the main idea that we've been talking about here. We stopped in there and talked a little bit about composition and things, but as we're looking at this tire, that's about as bright as you'd sort of be able to get it. If you want to get it any brighter, what, what's happening is after you know, you've gone to the largest aperture that you've got to let in as much light as you can, and you've got your shutter speed as long as you reasonably can, at some point it's still not going to be bright enough if there's not enough natural light or ambient light on the scene. So you could use a flash or you could increase your ISO and what it's doing here you can see is it's kind of boosting 
the signal, whatever the image is, it's kind of artificially making it brighter and brighter, or trying to, but the result of that is that we're getting that graininess and all these little like digital artifacts and pixelation and all kinds of stuff. So um, as we as our ISO increases, it, it degrades the image quality. And newer cameras, especially more expensive newer cameras, are getting really good at being able to shoot with high ISO speeds. Um, but typically, you boost your ISO, you're going to lose image quality.